Yo, I'm Daniel Donskoy. Welcome to season two of Friday Night Juice. And this time, everything's a little different. Friday Night Juice has evolved and grown. Puberty and bar mitzvah are now in the past. And now, we're going to study abroad. The only Jewish late night show is ready to board. And this time it's not a train. And not just one way. Welcome to Friday Night Jews around the world. What's up? Guten Tag, Freitag. Come home before we begin. Shabbat Shalom. I'm your homeboy. Alles fresh, alles neu. Habt ihr Fragen an den Juden? Herzlich willkommen. Jude, 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 Jude. Einfach nur ein Wort. Aber Antisemitismus ist in Deutschland Sport. What? Jude, 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 Sorry. Jews. We're in London. I fucking love it. In season one, we asked ourselves if it could ever be normal to show Jews on telly. Pretty quickly, we realized, not at all. But that doesn't just apply to Jews in Germany, but unfortunately to most marginalized groups around the world. But is that a German problem? Hmm. Is it only in the land of the Führer, where it is difficult to say I'm German and Jewish, German and Turkish, German and Russian? Is it the fault of the history books, the media, or is it you? Prost. But we are in London. Jews have it easier here to proclaim that they're British? Is a post-colonial society that is much more diverse than the German one a better place to live and understand your own cultural background but not be on the sidelines? The Jewish community here is the fifth largest in the world, after the USA, Canada, Israel and France, 0.43% of the UK's population. We will serve delicious meals and drinks, we'll debate the shit out of everything. But above all, we will try to find out how the Jews managed to control the world. Because after season one, I know one thing. They do for real. With sharpened knives, we're going straight in, in search of diversity, pluralism, and self-understanding. We want to bring something back with us. Ideas, opinions, and impressions that will help us in Germany to loudly scream In 2011, I moved here for drama school. And what should I say? I love it. It's fast, it's loud, but most of all, I love London for its diversity. The multicultural construct looks pretty much intact. But of course, the history of England is one of tough, shameless colonialism and centuries of extreme cultural exploitation. But still, you're going to hear people from all different backgrounds say, yes, I'm British. I'm British. I'm British. We're British. We're British. I'm 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 British. We're British. I am Irish. Whether yours or your parents' roots lie in Nigeria, Jamaica or continental Europe, or whether you're a British Jew. Sadly, racism is deep-rooted here in the UK. But another bummer is the class system. And it's pretty harsh. Eton, Cambridge, Oxford, elite background or working class. London is very mixed in that sense too. Between two blocks of luxury flats, you'll find a council estate. In Germany, anti-Semitism and racism are often talked about in the same spaces. Some find them comparable, others not. There's an ongoing debate whether or not they're the same thing. They are, they're not, they are, they're not, they are, they're not. Boom. Some British Jews fought for their homeland in World War II. 
Of course, they suffered and still suffer under anti-Semitism, but their Britishness wasn't ever denounced. The hatred towards their religion, their identity, did not cause them to be gassed to death by the millions. They were the only community in Europe not to be exposed to the Holocaust. Did that create a unique status? Or do they live the same collective trauma as, for example, German, French, Polish, Russian, in fact, all of the European Jews? Do British Jews find it easier to carry both identities? Do they, unlike in Germany, see Judaism as more of a religion than a culture? We're going to meet somebody who takes his relationship to God a little more serious than I do. His name is Rabbi Sam Frumson. How's it going? Very well, thank you. How are you? Nice to see you. You too. Thank you for the coffee. Such a pleasure. I'm going straight in with the first question. Hit me. Jewish and British. Does that form any sort of contradiction for you? Genuinely not. I'm very proud to be British. I'm you know, seven generations on my dad's side. But at the same time, I'm an Orthodox Jewish rabbi and yeah. I wear kippahs, it's it, and it's very noticeably part of my identity. I think they go well together. In a city with so many Orthodox looking Jews, yeah. I speak about the hat, the tails. Do people go, where is yours? Where's your hat? Why do you look so modern? It happens to me the whole time. Okay. People can't wrap their heads around the fact that I'm a rabbi, or if they do, they think I maybe I'm a reform rabbi. And obviously that would be a lovely thing, but I'm proud to be orthodox. Yeah. And for me, that's a religious perspective rather than a you know, societally in informed dress code. Mm, do you think the perception, the self-perception of Jews in the UK is that Judaism is religion, it's a culture, yeah. it's both. What is it for you? What is it for the general public? Look, for me personally, it's very much a religion. Yeah. You know, I, I'm a rabbi, I officiate at weddings and funerals, and I daven every day, I pray in the morning and evening. Um, but at the same time, of course, there's so much cultural richness to Judaism, and it's lovely to participate in that, yeah. but it doesn't define Judaism for me. Because we're a show from Germany, of course, we have to speak about the H word. So, how much does Holocaust remembrance, um, how much of it is an integral part of the self-perception of Jews in the UK? Do you think it's an integral part? It's a really important question, and of course it's there. It's an underlying element of your identity as a Jew. However, it's not something that comes up on a daily basis. I wouldn't be out there meeting people at work. Yeah, people yeah. would never bring up the Holocaust. Yeah, yeah. It just doesn't happen. And in Germany, it happens. I was at the embassy, and in fact, they were like, you know, trying to offload their guilt uh, in that moment. Embassy. I won't say that. You got a German passport, yeah, and you speak auch Deutsch. I can't even learn English. How many schools have you learned? In the school, I learned. Yeah, my family comes from Schlüchten. Aus Schlüchten. Die Nähe von Frankfurt. Ja. Ich war noch nie dort, aber ich bin mir sicher, es ist sehr, sehr schön. Vielen Dank. Dann Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. The majority of British Jews has been rooted here for generations. Because a Nazi organized mass extermination, as on Europe's mainland, did not happen here. And all these things lead me to the following thought. That British Jews find it easier to carry both identities equally. A British one and a Jewish one. I'm going to hit the hay, and tomorrow morning I'll see you at the fish market, because we're making fish and chips. I'm going to sleep. All right, never trusted you. Maybe I'll have a couple of beers tonight. Some people think I'm bonkers, but I just think I'm free. Man, I'm just living my life, there's nothing crazy about me. thinks of UK cuisine, of course, what comes to mind is a culinary hell of beans and sausages, deep-fried Scottish mass bars and haggis. But tonight I'll be cooking something that you would have never guessed was originally Jewish. I'm making fish and chips. You'll be surprised to learn that fish and chips, this also typically British dish, was brought here by Jews who were fleeing from Portugal. The chips, well, they're actually from Belgium or France or whatever. Fuck it. Fries are fries. Fish was particularly important to the Muranos, Iberian Jews who in the 16th century had to pretend to be Christians to save their lives during the Inquisition. They ate fish on Fridays when meat was forbidden by the church. First breaded and then fried, they would keep a few pieces to eat the next day, because Jews aren't allowed to cook on the Sabbath. Perfect camouflage. 
So I need cod. Fish, fish, fish. Do you have any cod? Yeah. Nice. This one looks cute as well, though. Yeah. What's that? There's a catfish. A catfish. Very cute. I think we should get married. But my mum said you don't play with food, so yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna take the cod. Please, yeah. Welcome to our dinner location. Yes, it's a pub. Because what is more British than getting shit-faced, scream and fight and eat terrible deep-fried food? And all that is what my guests are going to get. Okay, three times, fish and chips and mushy peas. Yeah, I'm going to call my pal Eran Tibi. He's head chef at the London restaurant Bala Baya. Their mission is bringing Tel Aviv to London. Perfect. Some Jews brought fish and chips. He'll know what to do. Hello. Hey, Ilan, how are you doing? Oh, my God, Daniel, how are you gorgeous? Look, I'm cooking fish and chips. Can you give me some tips? All right, listen closely. You start with seasoning the fish. You have to salt the fish before you even start putting it in a batter. OK, salt, I can do that. I need to check if the fish is truly fresh, so I need my kitchen assistant, Loki. Loki. Sit. How's the fish? I think it's good. Second thing, you fry the fry. <laughs> like I wanted to cook them. Listen, you have to listen. You fry the fry. Not once, not twice, but three times. I know the English call them chips, but I call them pommes. And those fries are going in the fryer. First round, 150. You get them soft, you take them out. Oh, that looks so delicious. Second round, 170. You get them uh, cooked from the outside. Since I was a little boy, I wanted to have a chip shop. Fries and German currywurst. But my mom was like, you're a Jew. You're not allowed to do that, because it's pork. Yeah, fuck, right? Life is tough. Life is not a dollhouse. And it's not a chip shop. Before you serve, whack it up, 180, and then fry it until it's golden brown. That's gorgeous. And now, the batter for the fish. Flour, pepper, baking powder, and beer. Dark beer. Now, the key for a really crunchy and fluffy fish is the difference between the temperatures. The batter needs to be really, really, really cold, like freeze cold. And the oil needs to be on precisely 170 degrees. Okay. The second those two touch each other, you create the reaction of a very fluffy and super crunchy batter that is invincible. I will dip the fish first in the flour, then in the batter. And now yes. we are going to fry it. All in one go. They're having fun together. A little oily fish party. Let's take a look how it all turned out. Well, um, it looks like the aftermath of a gangbang. Not so much like fish and chips. I think I'll do it again. Right, uh, what do you think? I think... I think I could sell these as art, not as food. Mmm. Maybe I should have left the cooking to a real Brit. And luckily I have two real Brits with me tonight. David Badil and Dana Margarine. The two couldn't be further apart, but at least they are both Juden at... Jews. David Badil says about himself he's English. And isn't there something this man can't do? Well, he certainly can write books, especially when they're about Jews, because he's a Jew. Hey, he said that. <laughs> Look at that. Jews don't count. He will also certainly make you laugh, especially if you're not completely addicted to political correctness. He's a comedian. And put the record on. It's time. Although he is a little Jew, he is responsible for one of the greatest football anthems in the world. And here she comes, Dana Margulie. 
She's also in the music industry, but her music is, let's say, a little classier than David's. Dana fronts the indie rock band Potridge Radio and describes herself as a singer and guitarist. And she writes her own lyrics, and those are, to my surprise, not about shoes. She's a writer. When she's not on tour, she devotes her time to painting. Okay, enough of the theoretical descriptions. I'm ready to get this fucking party started. In a very polite British manner, of course. Hello, lovely people. Hello, Hello Daniel. Here you go. Fish and chips. Fish and chips, because we're in Britain, and that's yeah. what British people eat. Thank you very much. And two fish and chips for you, of course. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Um, should I say a, a bracha? Since of this is, is this the only show with Jews in the title? Yes. That's amazing. Thank like, you. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Like Friday night Jews, so fri Freitag nach Jews. Freitag nach, no, Jews, we do. Oh, you go for Jews? Yeah, because people are afraid of the word, Jungen! <laughs> yeah, so. Yes, I was triggered yeah. immediately by you, you saying that. Yeah. I nearly ran. You didn't spasm, though, that's good. Well, I didn't spasm, but I wanted to so run. people get like... <laughs> yeah, although, do you have to say it like that? No, no, no. Do you no, have no, to go, no, Juden! No, no, you can go, Juden. Yeah, oh, that's oh, also that's weird, though, that's creepy. Oh. But it is amazing that, I mean, that we're in a pub in Britain and you've got the word Jews yeah, there, and there isn't a show like this. Yeah. Not even in America. There's yeah. not a show on mainstream telly that just talks about Jews. So maybe it's, it's kind of Germans brilliant. feel so sorry for themselves. Bracha? Um, <laughs> Should I say yeah. it? Yeah. Over that. Over. Is it with the finger guns? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Never uh, you seen to, that before. No, yeah, that's what you have to do. <laughs> you, have to point <laughs> at, you have to point at what you're saying a blessing over. I don't know if you know that. Okay, it's great. in the Talmud. Uh, yeah. Everyone, have some bread. I mean, yes, we have to, we have to. Yeah. So, yeah. thank you so much for being my guest today. Mm -hmm. What was the last Friday night dinner invitation you had? Um, you answer that. I don't even remember. I go to my parents quite a lot of Friday night dinner. Okay. So it's like a fairly. You regular. don't sit alone at home, alone did you? No, I do not. Correct. Did you have proper Friday night dinners at home when you yeah, were younger? Yeah, every week. Did you? Every Are Friday. you frummer? Than... No, not at all. Really, like secular parents, but. Like, you know, I had to go to Friday night dinner every single Friday. Like, couldn't go out on a Friday night really? as a teenager. Yeah. I'm, I mean, that is... I didn't have that. Oh, really? No, not at all. Do you have it now? No. I thought I could take a German yeah. to come to London. Yeah. Wow. To get this to is, Friday this night may night. be the first Jewish Friday night dinner I've been to for ages and ages and ages. And it's filmed. And it's a <laughs> German and it's filmed and... It's you really think you do this all the time? Don't oh. give it away. Did you cook this? Mm-hmm. It's absolutely brilliant. Is it good? Okay, good, 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 good. I'm happy. Did it's, you try the fish of it? Yeah? Yeah. Oh, mm. that's good. Mm. So, I had a weird Jewish upbringing. Like, the, my grandparents, who were fleeing from Germany, from my mum, born in Germany. I can go back to the fact that I am the only German at this table. You are the only I'm German the only one with proper German roots at this table, which is mad. It's okay. Hello, tired. hello, He's motherland. <laughs> Huge apologies. I wish I was the real German at the table, but it's David <laughs> Yeah, my mum was born in Königsberg, now in Königsberg. Kaliningrad, of course, but Königsberg, uh, she was born in April 1939. Or maybe wow. June 1939. Good timing for a Jew. Yeah, well, yeah. So, got out three weeks before the war. But um, when, when I was growing up, my dad kind of ruled the roost, and he's like a, he was a fundamentalist atheist or whatever. So we were having bacon and eggs and stuff for breakfast and completely not doing anything. But then, the only the nearest primary school to where I live, where a Jew wouldn't get bullied for being Jewish, was an Orthodox Jewish school called the North West London Jewish Day School. So full of bacon and eggs, I'd get there and I'd have to wear a sit sit and uh, sit sit you and, had to and, everything. and a yarmulke and say a blessing before every single food. And they were so religious. And I remember telling my daughter this, and she couldn't believe it, that we couldn't have milk after meat, right? Okay, I don't know if any of the people Jewish watching this understand what I'm talking about. You're not allowed to eat milk after meat, a proper kosher thing. So, because it's a primary school, they have to have custard, right? In a British, British primary school, you have to have custard. You yeah. have to have that. Yeah, have but they made it with water, which was the most disgusting <laughs> thing ever. So, to try and make it nicer for kids, they would make it weird colours, like bright green and blue. Blue, like blue custard, water based yeah. custard. That's yeah. horrific. Yeah, and I remember I was telling my daughter this when she was younger. And, and uh, on, I guess on, they didn't have soy milk at that point. No, no, God, no. I was yeah. telling my daughter this on the way <laughs> to on the way to her primary school, and she looked really upset, and she said, "Poor daddy had to have blue custard." <laughs> and I remember thinking I could put that on my gravestone, maybe. Yeah, you should. Yeah, I might. Mm -hmm. I might. Yeah. So both of you have grown up in London. Yeah. yeah. Fully. So you're Londoners. Well, I was born in New York. Just to add to the Jew thing, just to add to the Jew thing, sure. because my parents went and lived in New York, in upstate New York, not even in cool New York. So I don't really remember that, but I have got an American passport uh, and a British one. 
and I'm thinking about getting a German one. Do you know this? No. Yeah, I'm thinking about getting a ger German passport, so I don't know what your... Do you think David deserves a German citizenship? Just asking if they think you're worthy of a German Every time you passport. do that, I think, where's he? He's looking it's to God. God. It's Hashem. We, we're calling it the God. You're speaking to Hashem in God German. <laughs> Did you not know that God is German? God is German. Yeah, of, of course. course he is. Because <laughs> only a German God could have allowed the Holocaust. <laughs> wow. Wow. So that went quick. Ooh. Yeah, so, so yeah. yeah, because the truth is, and I'm sorry to say this on a German show, I still feel kind of weird about Germany because basically they've killed most of my family. So, yeah. so I think it's probably yeah. fair to feel weird. About, well, about Germany. It's, it's a perfect thing you're saying now. So the reason we started the show in the first place was because in Germany there was no show about Jews, right? Like, no show about Jews, no mention of Jews, unless it's about Holocaust remembrance. It's all, always about the Holocaust. We tried to make the first season in a way. We met young Jews. Yeah. Jews that are in media, Jews that are in politics. We're, I don't know, the, open, the first openly queer female rabbi to be. Wow. Stuff that Germans don't expect to be Jewish because Jews are piled up corpses. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then we said, okay, season two, what can we do? We want to, we want to go and ask in different countries how the perception is. And we have a thesis, like a, like a debate topic for every country. And for the United Kingdom, the topic is, we're saying that Jews in Britain have it easier to... Oh. <laughs> Jews, Sorry, that was noise, a good one. Yeah. Jews, is, is it Jews? Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Jews in Britain. <laughs> Mm. The idea that she had it easier was made her oh, actually gag, yeah. actually have a fit. Okay, yeah. Nothing should be easy. Jews really don't like to hear they have it easy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to stop laughing for the rest of the show now. <laughs> I love this. Tell um, me, what's your, what's yeah, your no, idea so of Jews in Britain? Yeah. Is okay. Jews in Britain have it easier to have both identities, a Jewish one and a British one, because for generations, 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 they're rooted in the United Kingdom. They're not all migrants, and that's because the Holocaust didn't happen here. That's the t debate topic we want to come in with. Okay. We want to say that that's very different to Germany. In Germany, 90% of the Jews came from the Soviet Union. Right. The ones who stayed are direct kids, grandkids of Holocaust survivors. Very difficult for me as well. Very difficult for me to say I'm German. Right. Um, so I want to put that up to debate. Would you, both of you, consider yourself British? Yeah. Yeah. I would. Is it difficult to say that? No. At any point? No, no I am British. Yeah. <laughs> what's, what's your family background? Um, my mum is from Hendon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and her mum is from Hendon. Wow. <laughs> There's a lot of Hendon. And her mum and her mum and her mum. And mom. before, no, but um, yeah, before then it's all very Lithuania and Belarus. And like my dad's dad was from Belarus and his mum is Kurdish. Well, she was born in Jerusalem, but before then, it's like, yeah. Mainly, and you grew up with an understanding of being British? Yeah, definitely British. British and Jewish? British, Jewish, yeah. Jewish, like, definitely as a primary part of that. Have you ever thought twice when you were growing up about saying whether you, you, know, you want to reveal that you're Jewish? To maybe, like, non-Jewish people? Around Not you? when I was growing up, but actually as an adult, that's when I started thinking about it. And it was actually when I started thinking, like, when I started performing and being on a stage, that I thought, OK, maybe now I don't want to reveal it because I think it's about being vulnerable to outsiders rather than being vulnerable to people who I'm directly in contact with. But then you also think about the privilege you have to not reveal that. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's an interesting exactly. thing. It's a, it's a, yeah. I think coming on this show specifically as well, that was, yeah. that was an issue. Yeah, that I was you, thinking, okay, am I gonna... You were scared. Am I gonna be Jewish actually loudly? And did that ever contradict to you? Like, w w was there any point in your life, especially, especially as a teenager, where you like start thinking about yourself as like the perception of okay, I'm, I have a passport and this passport says I'm British. But then my friends or like my cultural background, my parents. No, I've always just been like I'm, I'm British. I'm English. That's always just been like my primary way of understanding who I am. It's only kind of like later in life that I started to think about more of a complicated. I kind of idea. envy that to a certain extent. I yeah. never had that because we moved around so much. That I've always, like, the, the one thing that was always, the only constant was the Jew. Because okay. no matter if I was in Russia, yeah. in Germany, in Israel, because in Israel they called me the German one, which right. was the, the biggest irony of all. Um, so I kind of envy that, especially like, coming to London. When I came to London for the first time to drama school, I suddenly was there at Art Said and I saw all these people and everyone was like, oh, well, I'm from, it started with, I'm from Liverpool, I'm from Scotland. 
but you're all British, yes we are. But also, I'm Ghanaian, I'm Jamaican, I'm Jamaican yeah. from Liverpool, I'm this from that. OK, but let me tell you something which is, relates to what you were saying. So, um, one of the things that I'm thinking about doing, as seriously, as part of the Jews Don't Count documentary I'm doing, is trying to get the census changed. Because the census, the British census that does the population demographic, as time has gone on, in a good way, it's got more and more representative of the diversity of British culture, right? So it has now four or five different black categories that include West Indian or African or whatever, mm -hmm. and then lots of different ones, including Arab and blah, blah. There's no Jew category. Mm -hmm. There's like, like 17 different ethnicities now on the British census, no Jew category. There is, a, under religion, you could put Judaism. That doesn't mean anything to me, because I'm an atheist. Mm -hmm. And also, yeah. ethnicity is a whole different thing. There are, Whole, the, my basic, basic point in Jews Don't Count. What Jews Don't Count, for anyone who doesn't know, it's a book about how progressive consensus seems to me to downgrade anti-Semitism as an issue and yeah. Jews as a, as a sort of concern. Especially when you can fade, like, within, within the whole... Anti within the whole anti realm of that, of that kind of, conversation. Yeah. And it's not really a religion, or it's certainly not a religion as far as anti-racism goes. Yeah. Because I'm an atheist, but the, the Gestapo would have shot me tomorrow. Of course. Right? So it's irrelevant whether or not I keep kosher as far as racism goes. Yeah. Right? And that's the conversation that things like the census are supposed to be talking about, right? Of course. But Jew is not on there. It's not on there. I'm just yeah. surprised that you want to write that you're Jewish. I so totally want to write writes about it. I would totally want to write because the thing about me, Donna, is I have a militant lack of shame about being Jewish. Like a militant <laughs> lack of shame about it, which I think is quite rare. Now, and when I talk to people about Jewish shame, so one thing that, that when, I, when Jews Don't Count came out is that it had like th three responses, but one of them I wasn't expecting. So one of the responses was progressive people saying, oh God, yeah, maybe you're right. The ones who said that, are obviously ones who said, no, I hate this, I don't agree. But the ones who said that, um, then there were Jews saying, oh, we've you know, been kind of saying this for a while and I'm glad you've packaged it up. And then there were a lot of Jews, both young Jews and older Jews, for different reasons, saying, I've spent my whole life sort of not telling people I'm Jewish. Like, keeping quiet about it. Either because they were like Holocaust or children of Holocaust survivors, or more interestingly, young Jews who exist in very kind of woke, very kind of like talking about issue spaces, who feel it's not legitimate to grasp that as an identity. Do you have, like, asking somebody who exists in, in those spaces, yeah, like, yeah. Do, do you ever feel a, a delegitimization of our own Jewishness? No, not at all, but I don't think that I have suffered any discrimination in the way that, like, my black friends would, would have suffered. Like, I think that I am very white passing and I've never felt like I... It's not that I don't feel like it's a legitimate... Like, not a legitimate kind of racism. It's just that I don't think that my life is affected by racism in the same ways. And I don't because feel like right. I need to stand at the front and shout about Yeah. Yeah, so I just... Don't, I don't disagree with your experience, you're just saying, so I disagree with that as an idea for why anti-Semitism sort of should be relegated, because I think there's a number of things. Like, number one is the passing thing I have a real problem with, because, like, no, one, no progressive person would ever say to a gay man, OK, just don't tell people you're gay, just stay in the closet and, you know, you won't suffer homophobia, so why are you going on about it? They just would never say that. But they will say to a Jew, you can pass, no one knows you, why, just don't talk about being Jewish. They'll say no that, that, that all the time. Interesting. Well, that to you. Totally, because really? that's what the passing argument is. What Not is quite. the passing argument? I think it's argument? more that you can choose when you want to be... Well, so it's it's about having the choice, no, it's like, I can so walk around someone, and it's, it's a, like, for me, it's a choice. But so can rhythm. someone gay. And there's, then there's always so a sense that's of like lucky for them, but not all gay people can, or like not all trans people can. Like a lot of the time, it's it's a privilege to be able to pass. Yeah, I don't really agree with you that. Get to, you I get don't really it. agree with that. No, I don't think it, I don't. It can be, but I think it can also feel like you uh, saying it's a privilege to be able to pass feels to me like a, just another way of saying to you pass, can stay in the closet. But to if pass you want. on the but outside. But it's not at all. To that's not what it is. Outside. Yeah, it's like yeah. inside. I know that I'm Jewish, and that is really important to me, an important part of my identity, and an important part of my family life and my values. But I get to choose whether or not people know that about me. Whereas a lot of people don't get the choice to say whether or not that is who they are. It's like. If you're walking around and you are a trans black woman, you don't most no, of the time I, you don't, I get, don't get to say that you know you don't have the choice about whether or not people see you in a certain way. So you, I have a certain level of safety, which I think okay, yeah, me, but that's what, my privilege is that I get to choose that. I get to be in a taxi and not necessarily have to tell the taxi driver my background because they but, can't just guess. But it. within yeah. the progressive space, I think there's a sense in which identity is something you should be proud of, right? And I, I would am say. in front of my everyone who knows it. <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> or, yeah. right, okay. But I think there's no reason why. Jewishness should not fit an identity that you should be proud of all the time. Why should it not? 
And why are you? Why would you not want to say it all the time? I'll, I'll tell you why. I'll I think tell you it, why I what, wouldn't. Well, it's because as a musician who is a woman, I always get asked, "What like? What's it like to be a woman in music? It's not tell me about your music just as a person. It's what's it like to be a woman? The womanhood has to come first, and I don't want to have another thing where I have to say, "Oh yeah, like." I'm Jewish and a woman, and now I have to explain like the Judaism within my music. Like, why can't the the thing that I'm doing come first? And it's actually it's a privilege not to have to give things away, or not to, have to be able to choose when you give things. Because away. people can't see that on the first glance. Is that yeah, what you're saying? Yeah, exactly. So really, but the differentiation is then like what you, what you can see and what you can't. But the feeling, I think, um, even given the fact that you thought about that, to not give something away is already like a point of giving in. To, uh, for me, I, I'm a bit no. with. I'm a bit between because I. I, I, I no, I appreciate by, what yeah, I'm yeah. saying completely. Mm. But, but my experience in the progressive space yeah. is totally like empower these people, like empower them in their identities. My experience in progressive spaces is that anti-Semitism is really legitimate, and people really want to give me space to talk about that. And I just don't necessarily need to take up that space talking about it because I don't think that it's. Yeah. I don't agree with the notion well. of taking up the space. You see, I think it's an infinite space to talk about anti-racism. Yeah, for sure. But like you know, me talking means that somebody. Okay, else. so I get. So it hasn't happened to you, okay? Yeah. That's cool. But I get that it happens to us. I think cool. anyone should be able to talk. I could about show it. you a text from someone who's like 19. Yeah. Who is Jewish and incredibly in that space and like spends all his time at, at university in a state of allyship, right? And trying to help other minorities and blah, blah, blah. And he just wrote to me and said, look, I read your book and I realized I have spent all this time not raising my hand and saying, can we talk, can we give like three minutes to anti-Semitism? Can we talk a little bit about anti-Semitism? Can we talk about um, the fact that maybe you've said something, you very woke person, that was maybe that I found anti-Semitic, but I didn't want to say that, because he felt entirely illegitimate about saying that, because essentially of things that you've said, which is an idea that all other minorities have it worse, all other minorities are kind of more saying, important. Well, I think no, 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 you no, did no. say but that, it's, but it's a different, You did it's, say it's, that. It's, it's, it's a self-perception. I think people have, just have completely different notions of what it means to take up someone's space. Yeah. Uh, because, like, when I chose to talk about Judaism, and I did that on a big show on public German television, I suddenly got death threats for the first time in my life yeah. through social media. Because now, you came out of the closet and you weren't passing anymore. And exactly, that's what happened. Exactly. But also, I used it because I, just like you, I have all the chutzpah and I love it. Yeah. Like, because I say it's important. For me, it's important because I think I'm doing something good for other people who might not be able to raise their voices. Whilst not delegitimizing the fact that I'm taking up any space of another minority, I go, like, look, my topic of anti Semitism should not deflect off the topic of Black Lives Matter but it can coexist in the same space. Yeah. That's what I believe Absolutely, in. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and, and I think it, it can And also, it's work. not the same. The no, racism no, no, is different. Not. Completely different. You know, like, the type of structural racism that b black people face is, in general, not faced by Jews, right? But that doesn't yeah. mean that Jews are somehow invulnerable. In fact, as we all know, violent crime against Jews is incredibly Crazy. on the rise. Hate crime against but Jews... But it's not saying that Jews are invulnerable. It's saying something else, saying that, actually, like, that we do have certain privileges, and I think those are different things. Like, it's not saying, oh, I'm completely invulnerable because but I'm also not every Jew. white. It's like white yeah. looking Jews. Not every Jew. Yeah, of course. And, and, it's different and, for everyone. But, but also within the stereotype, I mean, if you haven't suffered from anti Semitism, that is great. I, I have. Um, and I think that within the stereotype, one of the ways in which anti Semitism continually creeps in is the notion from people who don't even think they're anti-Semitic that Jews are invulnerable, that they're per powerful and privileged, that they don't really suffer racism, that it isn't really a proper racism, and that Jews raising their hand and talking about it are taking up space from other minorities. When you say, I have suffered anti-Semitism, is is, what does that mean? It, has a, it means that I've been at Chelsea, and uh, there's a thing that I did where I was trying to raise, a, raise awareness of the fact that because Tottenham are seen as a Jewish club, which itself is anti-Semitic, because 95% of them aren't Jews, uh, but they have a thing whereby they chant the, what I call the Y word, which is the word Yid, and they've been chanting it for years. And uh, I was once at my club, Chelsea, and when anything to do with Tottenham comes up, as a result of this, the whole crowd starts Goes chanting yid, 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 in incredibly menaces, menacing way. They chant Spurs are on their Aus way to Auschwitz. Hitler's going to gas them again. Like, incredibly. I put, I've put up with this for years. Yeah. So one day, me and my brother are there in the place that we sit, and this happens, yid oh, yid oh, yid And then one guy behind us just starts shouting, fuck the Jews, fuck the yids, fuck the Jews, over and over again. It's incredibly frightening, incredibly horrible. Yeah. 
My, and, uh, and no steward did anything. That's the point. Stewards charged, as they are by that time in football, with any racism heard in the terraces means that person is thrown out for life. They did nothing because they don't see it as racism. That's awful. And I that think that there's, there's two different things happening there. Because that, on the one hand, that is anti-Semitism and that is racism and something should be done about that. But that is not to say that in progressive spaces people don't take anti-Semitism seriously, because I think that they do. And I think that there's two different issues. One is that anti-Semitism is really real and really exists and people really suffer from it. And the other one is that in progressive spaces maybe people don't have like a very strong understanding of what anti-Semitism is, but when I think people are really willing to learn and really willing to engage with it and really willing to stand up for Jews, and that is just what I've experienced. Okay, that, that, that is great, and I don't think you're wrong, and this happened a while ago, and I think things have changed, partly because me and my brother then made a film called The Why We're Trying to Draw Attention to It, and that was heard. Question, does a Jew realise he's a Jew or she's a Jew when they suffer anti-Semitism? Um, I, I think more so, yeah. Yes. I think I become more Jewish. What, what, what's, like, the core of feeling Jewish? Because I never understood it myself. Like, how, when people try to explain your Judaism, I go... Fuck, I don't know. I don't have words. Like, I, don't, I feel it. I think, for me, it's, like, a commitment to my family and family life, and it's a, a love of... I guess it's, like, it's community building, and I think as a teenager, the things that made me feel really Jewish was going on Jewish summer camps and singing together with other Jews and learning about Jewish history and Jewish traditions, and it's lighting the candles. And I think singing on camp was a way, or singing in Jewish spheres was a way of understanding that you don't need to be a good singer in, like, you know, theoretical terms to be yeah. able to sing with emotion and sing in a way that connects you to people. And I think, for me, that's an incredibly Jewish thing. I also think that my, my, although I can't sing, uh, although I have had four number ones, but I can't sing. Okay. That's weird. Showing off. Yeah, well, I, I am <laughs> okay. showing off. Well, someone's had four number, number ones. ones. Yeah. How many numbers have you had? I, I yeah. haven't had a number yeah, one. Yeah, no, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look, do you think four? we should have number ones? He's actually had four number ones. Maybe it's because he's more Jewish than we are. <laughs> I am clear. Oh, I think it's because he's yeah. more Jewish. That's I, amazing. Four number ones. Let's talk about that. I'm clear it was a humble brag. It's a humble brag, OK? Bang to right. But you know, but it I want a number. How do we get a number now one? Now everyone's well, going to know that you have four number ones. Uh, well, it was just a weird fluke in my case. Yeah, what would you want? I want a number one song. What yeah. was the first number one song? No, it was only one song. It's one song, which <laughs> is Three Lions. Football's Coming Home has been released four times. It's and been has released gone, four times? And gone to number one every time. OK. Yeah. yeah. So that's kind of cheating. Yeah, completely cheating. Yes. Are you going to sing it? No, we're going to play a game now. OK, okay cool. Great. So what I'm going to do is... You and What's this? Because we were talking about it and I mm. said pickle juice. I, I can't drink alcohol. Is it alcohol? It's not alcohol. Okay. It's worse. It's a mixture of uh, pickle... <laughs> I'm just going to say it. Yeah, he already pickle called juice. it. I did say and it. Said it's so it's pickle, yeah. pickle juice, a mix of uh, egg, pickle. I was smelling it first, yeah. obviously. Pickle yeah, juice would literally translate to pimple juice, but of course this is real and actual pickle juice. We mixed different kinds and made a shot out of it. Hey, you're really treating us. I'm treating you really well, and we're going to play a song. I'm. Um, is it like a game. a game whereby if we lose the game, we have to drink the pickle juice? Of course, okay. Of course. <laughs> so I'm starting to play a song. Okay. Whoever knows okay. the artist. <laughs> this is really summer campy. The name of the song. <laughs> yeah. And whether or not the performer's Jewish. Oh, and wow. And all three need to be right. If you're right, you don't have to do it. Name Jews. artist and Jew or not. Mm -hmm. Great. OK. Here's to the ones that we got. Cheers to the wish you were here, but you're not. Because the dreams bring back all the memories of everything we've been through. No. You have a beautiful voice. Thank you very much. It's lovely, yeah, but no, I don't know it. Really, it's Maroon 5. Oh, Jewish? yeah, so he's Jewish. He is Jewish. Adam, it's Adam. Levine. Levine, You yeah. both have to drink the pickle juice. No, no, I, I no, knew I that. Doesn't it. that help? No, no, it's all three. All of it or You're just joking. one sip? All of it. What if this kills me? I'll be sick me? if I drink all this of it. This will kill me. On yeah. an empty stomach? No, <laughs> okay, oh, just fuck, I'm not drinking all of that. I'm sorry, Dan. It's, it's really... nice, but it's like you have to drink no, it slowly. Vinegar. It's like drinking vinegar. I'm not going to drink all of it. Just have a little sip. I had a sip. I heard that you settled down by you. Found a girl and you're married now. Adele, and she's not Jewish. She's not Jewish. Adele is not Jewish. She's not Jewish. She's not Jewish. Adele is not Jewish. I love her so you, much. You tell me, <laughs> I love her. She can't if be you Jewish. Tell, I love her too much. If you tell me... Know. Song title. Yeah. Oh, oh uh, it's uh, someone like you, isn't it? 
Yeah. You have to drink. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I think Dana loves the pickle juice. <laughs> Amy Winehouse. Amy Winehouse. Okay, uh, Jewish Daniel. and Jewish. Keep going. Back, back, back to black. black. It's back to black, isn't it? By Amy Winehouse. She's Jewish. Yeah. Okay, you're playing together now. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. I want to take you somewhere so you know I care, but it's so cold. Oh, uh, another love. Where. Is is it a uh, Tom Odell? Yeah. I don't. And he's not Jewish. David's drinking. Yeah. Chug it. I'm not chugging chug it. it. <laughs> Honestly, I will be sick if chug I chug it. this. Chug it. Kind of one more sip. I mean, yeah. one oh, really why are you one doing one. this to me? <laughs> Have another sip. Come on. Okay. I mean, you both um, were less good than I expected. Yeah, that's all the songs. Oh. Um, I thought you were getting some that I knew. Okay. It's really nice. I think we got to cheers with the pickle juice. Yeah, I think we ought to. I honestly think if you drink all that, <laughs> you'll you basically you'll, you'll, you'll create yeah. an immediate yeah. ulcer in your stomach. It'll be Do like you become, oh, you become Christian. Well, no, that's only blood of children. True. <laughs> oh my God, this is terrible. I asked you to send me some questions for my British guests, and those questions will be forwarded now. What are your dreams and hopes? About the Jewish future in Britain. <laughs> that's, a, that's a real question? Yeah. Wow. Do you have dreams and hopes I about don't... the Jewish <laughs> I love that you <laughs> diverted the question immediately. <laughs> I, I, no, I don't have dreams and hopes. Yeah. No, yeah. not in the sense that I lie in bed at night thinking, I, I really wish that my rabbi would, can dance <laughs> oh, on a mountain. Hopes. No, but I, I guess I do have a. Yeah, I have a bit yeah. of a hope yeah. that, yeah, that Jews will be included a bit more in that conversation than before. That's okay. what I hope. Would any of you consider living in Germany? The land of the perpetrator. <laughs> Don't think of Germany as the land of the perpetrator. The, What's the no, matter no, no, with you? But that's the question of a German person asking you. Oh, okay, that's sorry. a funny thing. Yeah, it's okay. not me. Sorry. I don't think Germany's the land of the perpetrator. Okay, sorry. I live anywhere. Yeah? Yeah. Even in the land of the perpetrators? Even in the land of perpetrators. But um, there are other reasons why I couldn't live in Germany. Okay. Like, I don't speak German. I don't speak German. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, don't like Germany. I don't, I don't, I don't like the German. I, I, I don't like <laughs> I don't, I don't, I'm not sure about the food. Uh, the food here was great, but this was English food. And I'm going to say something which is probably stereotypical and maybe xenophobic, but I'm not sure about the German sense of humour, except obviously in your case. Oh. But you're Russian and Ukrainian. That's my last and question, and, actually. Yeah. Sense of humour. Given the very dark humour in the UK, how do you feel about Holocaust jokes? Uh, uh, well, I have a whole thing that I do about Holocaust jokes, uh, which is that I think you can tell a Holocaust joke that is horrible and mean and cruel and mean-spirited and racist, mm -hmm. and you can tell a Holocaust joke. Because for me, jokes are not about the subject matter, they're about the joke. Yeah. And a Holocaust joke can shine a light on the absurdity of the situation, or it can satirise the perpetrators, or it yeah. can make the people, Germans the victims, mean. Germans, yeah, yeah, feel less alone or whatever. Part, I'll tell you a Holocaust joke. Please. Let me tell you a Holocaust Please. joke. This is a beautiful Holocaust joke. So well, much. this is a beautiful Holocaust okay, joke. This, this Holocaust is joke Holocaust is for you. It was told to me by, by a Jewish academic, a really okay. wonderful woman called yes. Devorah Baum. Okay. Um, and it, it's about a Holocaust survivor. After the war, a Holocaust survivor dies of natural causes, sometime after the war, goes to heaven. When he gets to heaven, God asks the survivor to tell him a Holocaust joke. So the survivor does. And God says, that's not funny. And the survivor says, well, I guess you had to be there. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for being here. Lovely people. If you want to join the conversation, you are very welcome to do so under the hashtag Freitag nach Jews or Friday Night Jews anywhere where you can watch us. I'm really happy my guests were with me today and I wish you a wonderful night. <laughs>